It's not been the best of weeks for Manchester United on the pitch, off the pitch, with the Glazer protests that are going on and fans communicating their voice. That's fantastic. That's the most important thing. But in terms of how Man United have been playing on the pitch, we lost to Roma in the second leg. We went through to the Europa League final, so that didn't really matter. Then we made 10 changes after we beat Villa. And then we lost to Leicester. And 48 hours later, we got pumped by Liverpool at Old Trafford. And suffice to say, there was a... A frustrated reaction last night, given that it was our strongest team that was out there. And Roy Keane in particular went in pretty hard, as you would expect from Roy Keane, on Manchester United's squad, the quality of it, and whether or not it can actually compete with Man City next year. So what I want to do in this video is react to Roy Keane's comments, have a look at what he said, give my own opinion on whether I think Roy Keane's comments were fair or not. And I want to know from you, as always, in the comments, what you think about Roy Keane's comments on United's squad quality after that 4-2 defeat against Liverpool. Make sure you subscribe down below. It's free, it's quick, get involved. Let's talk about those comments from Roy Keane. And let's dive straight into them. This is the first thing that Roy had to say. Um, you know, Oli looks a bit shell-shocked there. I think it's been a tough few days. You know, the performance tonight, nowhere near good enough. On the back of the Leicester result, when you start playing your squad players, you think are good enough to get Man United back to winning league titles. Absolutely no way. I think all United's shortcomings have been shown up in the last couple of days. And um, tonight, just not enough quality. All he's mentioned there, giving such bad goals away. But the other worry, again, I think Liverpool could have scored six or seven. We've praised United the last few months, but this, this squad is so short of competing, I think, with Man City to win the title. And it's just been, all their shortcomings have been shown up the last few days. And that's why I think Ollie found it really difficult to even speak to. I, I, I think he's shell-shocked from... The four goals tonight and even the poor performance the other night against Leicester. So there's a lot that Roy had to say there. And there's quite a few points there that I want to dissect. And the first one, he's talking about United's shortcomings. Now, these are shortcomings that I've been saying all season. You've been saying all season. They're not exactly surprising. When you look at Manchester United's starting eleven, largely, it's fantastic. You've got Bruno Fernandes in the middle with Paul Pogba. You've got a front three there of Rashford. You've got Cavani. You've got... Greenwood, a back four. You've got Maguire, who clearly is important to United, whether or not you like him. Wan-Bissaka and Short as fullbacks. It's a hell of an upgrade of what we had a few years ago. The partner for Maguire, questionable. But then we've got De Gea or Henderson. The starting eleven is of real quality. But we, we saw against Leicester, sorry. And this is the key difference. And this is why it is a shortcoming. Because I don't think... And King goes into it in a little bit more detail. But I don't think United could move forward with Freddie McTominay in midfield. And I have been banging on this drum for so long, I'm bored of saying it. But it's the most important signing we need to make. A truly top-class, defensive-minded central midfielder who knows how to play that position, like Fabinho at Liverpool, like Fernandinho at City, like Kante at Chelsea. It's such a crucial position in the modern game that just United do not have. And because of that, it throws the team all out of sorts. And I, I like Fred. Some people might not, but I like him. I like McTominay. But for me, they're probably both squad players. Because what we should have been playing against Leicester was McTominay and Fred in midfield. And then it would have been good. Then we would have been happy about it because that would have been our reserves, I would have said. And in a, in a game like this against Liverpool, we should be playing Pogba and Bruno with a, with a top-class midfielder behind them. That's what we should be having in these games. So they are the shortcomings and they have been exposed. And... If you're looking at that game against Liverpool, is as an isolated incident, it was a it was a great opening twenty and then a terrible seventy. It, United so much this season have had a terrible forty five and, and a brilliant forty five. We've been very inconsistent inside ninety minutes and very inconsistent week to week, and that consistency still isn't there. Still massively isn't there. So if you're talking about shortcomings, they certainly did get exposed, and I think Roy Keane is absolutely spot on when he says that. So let's take a look at what Roy Keane had to say next. Well, let's get, well, I think when you're playing for a big club, you have to you have to accept that you're going to play a lot of games. You're going to be playing two, three games a week. But he made changes the other night. It's not as if he's asked players to play two games in 48 hours. But when the, the performance against Leicester, you know, did one shot and target in 19 minutes. And these are the players who are your backup players, your squad players. But the squad players have shown to be to be short, particularly if you compare them with Man City. And that's who you have to compare them about because that's who you're competing against. Just a quick one on that point there. City is the marker. They won the league and that is United's ambition. So we have to compare ourselves to City. There's no point comparing ourselves to Chelsea or Arsenal or Spurs or even Liverpool now. 
it has to be City that we compare ourselves to, to the top team in the league. And when you look at City's bench every game, it's it's insane. And of course they spent money, but United have spent money. We've just spent money poorly. But it doesn't mean that we don't have to spend money now. The spending has to happen. And if we're going to build on this progress that we've seen this year, and certainly if we can win the Europa League as well, it has to come with new signings next summer. It has to. If we want to get that squad closer to where City is and then no, where they're so far ahead of us at the moment. But I think Man City are so far ahead of this, this United squad, it's scary. And I think Ollie will reflect the last few days and think, we need three or four big players to come into this club in the summer. Three or four, at least. And of course, we all know that's easier said than done. The recruitment's got to be right. He's got to be given money to spend. I just look at the performance tonight of the two midfielders. Mac Tomlin is a good, honest player. They got Fred. As long as them two players are playing in midfield for Manchester United, they will not be winning any big trophies. OK, they've got the Europa League final in a few weeks. That's only, they're only not fine because they, they come up short in the Champions League. Now, let's not be kidded on by that either. I, I'm really... The last few days, of, I, I can't believe how, how short Man United are. And Ollie mentioned it again tonight about they're chasing the game. They need a goal. They bring Matic on instead of Van der Beek. You know, it's not good enough. United's squad certainly has improved over the years. Uh, and we're certainly right now in a better position than where we were a few years ago, for example. But still, the quality isn't there. As I said, that start 11 is great. But you take Bruno Fernandes out of it. You take Paul Pogba out of it. You take Rashford and Greenwood out of it. Who do you put in there? You've got Matomene, you've got Fred. You've got Ahmad, who's a really raw, young talent that we don't really know that much about. We don't have a right winger. So whenever you're playing... Rashford out on the right wing, which is which is what you do to accommodate Pogba on the left wing. It throws the whole team out of balance. And United just Rashford on the right wing is basically useless. He just doesn't know what to do. He's so naturally gifted on the left wing and, and that style of play, he just can't do it out on the right. But we keep putting him out there because we don't have a right winger. Bring a bring a right winger into it and we won't be faced with that problem anymore. It's not just about having a, a we all know how football works. Football is what? If you're going to win the Champions League and the Premier League, what's that, 50, 50 games? And that doesn't even bring in the FA Cup or the League Cup. There's so many football games across the season that you cannot expect a starting eleven to play every single week, not get injured. It just does not happen. That is not reality. So the quality of the squad very much determines whether you will be able to challenge. I mean, look at United in 99. We didn't win that because... Cold and York played every single game. We had Solskjaer and Sheringham to switch in and out. We have four amazing strikers. And that's what allowed us to win the FA Cup, the Premier League and the Champions League. And United just don't have that at the moment. At the moment, United have... Uh, well, you know what we've got. We've got an excellent starting eleven, I think. But past that starting eleven, United have real weaknesses. And clearly, they did get exposed by Leicester. Um... That, that was abundantly obvious. Green was the only player there who, who started against Villa and, was, and he scored. Uh, other than that, United didn't really... Did we even have a shot on target past that? And Freddie McTominay, for me, they're squad quality midfielders. They're good squad quality midfielders, but they're squad quality. They're not elite city quality. And that's the difference. That's where we do fall short. And that's why I think Keane is spot on in what he's saying here. And it just... It, the Glazers have said so much shit over the years and they're coming out with what looks like hot air at the moment saying oh we're, we, we're fully committed to the club prove it this summer man give Solskjaer the money to actually make the right signings not signings that Ed Woodward wants to make when he's chasing Fabregas and Bale all summer and, and they don't really fit the profile of what United need let Solskjaer sign Sancho let Solskjaer sign a truly world-class defensive midfielder and maybe even a centre-back to partner Harry Maguire. Unlikely because it's coronavirus, it gives the Glazers a reason not to spend. But if we really do want to compete, that's what we need. And that is what Keane is going on about. And he makes a good point here as well. Well, we talk about progression for Man United. And I've given Ali plenty of praise over the last 12 months and some of the players' progression. But finishing second it is still... Not good enough what for about United. winning the Europa League final as well? No, no, that would have been the bottom of my list of priorities at the start of the season. The bottom of the list, because remember, at the start of the season, you're in the Champions League. If they had it's, it's that's like second, fail, it? failure is rewarded in football now, and it, that's what the Europa League is failure because you've not achieved at the highest level, the highest level obviously being Champions League in Europe. So, I, I, at the start of the year, where would you have took that though? Europa League in second place? 
I, I wouldn't have been interested in Europa League because I think you're in the Champions League, but I would have put the FA Cup more of a priority in terms of getting your hands on a trophy. I, I go back to my own experience at United. I don't think we ever spoke in the dressing about development and progression. And God forbid if anyone ever said second in the league is good. You know, do, you know. Doesn't it depend where you're coming from to get to that point? Isn't this gradual progression back to where they want to be? Yeah, but, it, but we've... The, Man City and Liverpool have raised the bar over the last few years. This idea of finishing second, it's not as if they finished second and City have won it the last day of the season. Man City have won the league the last, you know, they won it two months ago. The league's been over the last few months. So United have gotten a comfort zone of going, well, we're second, they've had a few plaudits. And I've been one of them. But all of a sudden, the last week or two, I'm looking at this Man United group of players and their mentality. Even tonight, nowhere near good enough. Nowhere near good this group of players will not close the gap on Man City next year. No chance. When it comes to players setting standards, there's very few that have ever done it better at Manchester United than Roy Keane. And that's the mentality that he's, he's coming at this with. I think he's being a little bit over-aggressive in saying that the Europa League is complete failure because it's not. You're still winning a trophy. And he would value the FA Cup over the Europa League. And again, that's down to personal experience because <laughs> Roy Keane never had to experience the Europa League. But... United have certainly made progress this year and us losing to Leicester, us losing to Liverpool doesn't negate that fact. It doesn't take away from it completely. It certainly shows that we're we're tailing off towards the end of the season and I'll be honest, I've tailed off. I can't be arsed with football and I've said this to you so much. I mean, the players must be thinking, it's so boring, man, to watch an empty stadium and hear everything and not hear the fans and there's no hostility there's no atmosphere there's no to and fro among the fans and I'm bored of it and the players must be bored of it and we're only a few games away from the end of the season and I don't really mind I don't care as I said I don't care what happens between now and the end of the year in the Premier League because we, we've done our job we're inside the top four we've got Champions League football next year and whether we finish a close second to Man City or whether we Slip down to third. Doesn't really change anything in the course of the season. Of course, it helps with the momentum going into the Europa League final and the momentum into the summer. But if anything, maybe having a bad end to the year might force the issue a little bit more with United and force the issue a little bit more with the signings that we do need. Because maybe if we had stormed to a close second, it would have given the Glazers even more reason to say, look, look how close you got. You don't need new signings, but we do. We massively need new signings. Three or four, that's optimistic, and even Keane knows that. But in terms of what I want, I've said it all along, and it will not change. The priority is a defensive midfielder for United in the summer. I don't care what anybody says. We've scored so many goals this year. Scoring goals is not the issue. Having another centre forward, that would be brilliant. That would be fantastic. But what I think United are doing is signing Cavani to a one-year extension to then go in for Haaland next year, because I think Dortmund will take the same stance on Haaland this summer that they took on Sancho last summer. And I don't think anyone's going to pay that in this market. Therefore, Haaland will stay. And therefore, next year, his release clause comes in. And that's where United will go in. So I don't think a centre-four will happen this summer. I, I think Sancho, there's a huge possibility that Sancho will happen. And we still need that. We've still not got the right winger. Ahmad Diallo, you can't rely on an 18-year-old to come in from Serie A where he had 90 minutes and expect to become Sancho immediately. He may well, but he needs to be eased in. And Solskjaer certainly has eased him in. But it's a defensive midfielder, it's a right winger, and it's a centre-back. You're looking at three signings that can transform United this summer? There you go. That's what United need. Whether or not they get it, I don't know. But I completely agree with Keane that the shortcomings have been exposed this, last, this week, this last two weeks. Shortcomings that we've all known are there. But shortcomings that only come around when you have to play four games in eight days and you have to rotate basically the whole squad. But when you're Man City, you could do that. You could cope with it. And there wouldn't be any real change in quality or style of football between that starting eleven and the second eleven. In United, when you take certain players out, we almost play a different style of football completely because we rely on those players to set the tempo, to set the style. That Certainly part of that comes down to coaching, but certainly a huge part of that comes down to player quality as well. So I agree with Keane. I think United's squad is not good enough right now to compete with Man City for the title next year. I don't think that's unfair to say. I think it's fair to say there's been huge progress this year, but it's also very fair to point the finger at the weaknesses that have been exposed that need to be sorted this summer if we are to take that next step up. And this has been a year of progression. If we can win that Europa League final, win second, it's good 
It's a good season, but Keane there setting the standards. The Europa League, you're only in that because you're not in the Champions League. That's also a fair point. And that's where United need to get towards, the Champions League, and actually competing for the Premier League and come the start of May, actually still being in the title race. We haven't had that for a while. That's our aim. And I agree with Keane that we need probably three signings this summer to make that happen. Will we get them? I don't know. But let me know what you think about Roy Keane's comments down below, as always. And if you enjoyed the video and you're still here, first of all, Big up to you. Second of all, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below or drop a like if you're watching it on Facebook. But let me know what you think about Roy Keane's comments on the quality of United's squad and certainly compared to City.